was South Africa's first multiracial elections, the one cast by a violent Zulu boycott was lifted today at the 11th hour. Chief Mangasutu Butelezi announced that his Inkata Freedom Party will, after all, take part. He pledged himself to reconciliation. The ANC President Nelson Mandela called the agreement a leap forward for peace. Our Africa correspondent Mark Austin reports from Johannesburg. The smiles and the handshakes that may well save this nervous country from disaster. South Africa's political leaders clinching a last-minute deal to bring Chief Butelezi's rebellious Zulu Inkata party into next week's elections. President de Klerk called it a great moment for South Africa. This agreement, I believe, removes one of the last main causes for tension and violence in the Republic of South Africa. South Africa may well have been saved from disastrous consequences of unimaginable proportions and has been put on a cause which I hope will lead to long-lasting peace. This agreement is the leap forward for peace, reconciliation, nation building. The deal guarantees the privileges and status of this man, the Zulu king, as well as providing greater autonomy for his homeland, which erupted into spontaneous celebration as news of the deal came through. In Carter Party election posters are already appearing on the streets. There's no question this is a major breakthrough and could well bring South Africa back from the brink of civil war. But in a country where political violence is endemic, murder and intimidation are still likely to mar these historic elections. These dramatic pictures captured by an ITN cameraman today show the levels of political violence. ANC gangs fighting fierce battles within Carter gunmen in the Johannesburg township. Hatreds in these areas are so deep-seated and so many people have died that this is a carnage that fuels itself whatever deals are struck by the politicians. But tonight, a sign of hope as Zulu and Carter supporters parade through the streets of Durban, the capital of violence-scarred Natal. They were calling for peace. Mark Austin, News at 10, Johannesburg. And Mark Austin joins us now live from Johannesburg. Mark, why did Chief Butelezi agree at this late hour? Well, it's very difficult to tell because he seems to have settled for a deal that he had been offered and rejected over the past few weeks. Um, but it seems clear that he risked being politically marginalised by not taking part in these elections. I think he considered he'd pushed things as far as they could go, that the alternative was carnage and bloodshed, and that in the end political power was the thing that was important to him. There's also evidence of a split within the Encarta party, a number of people uh, wanting to take part in these elections, a number of supporters increasingly angry about being deprived of the opportunity to vote in the elections. Mark, do you get a sense there tonight that this deal is sufficient to ensure a smooth transition in the democratic process now? Well, I think, as I say, that depends on the men of violence and the gunmen in the townships and whether they heed the call of their political masters. But I think the important thing about this agreement is the psychological impact in terms of business confidence in South Africa. The stock market soared today on news of the announcement and more importantly, perhaps, in terms of foreign investment and the international perception of South Africa, which Nelson Mandela said this afternoon was fundamentally important. Um, but I think overall, in terms of the transition to democracy and the prospect for freer and uh, more fair elections in South Africa, the prospects are brighter tonight than they were this morning. Mark Austin, thank you. I've been talking to two teenagers about their hopes and ambitions for the future. Trophus Lamini has come of age, a black Sowetan turning 18 just in time to join all black South Africans in voting for the first time. <laughs> Kristen Anderson was celebrating her 18th on the other side of town, less than 20 miles away in a Johannesburg suburb. This mainly white area could be a different country, but it isn't. This is South Africa, and so is this a land that Kristen and Trophus must now share. St Andrew's School for Girls has been good insulation from that friction between the people. 
the clarion of the dreaming earth. Kristen is studying Shelley for her final exams later this year. Nothing better illustrated the discrimination of apartheid than the difference between black and white education, and South Africa's blacks are demanding reform. There's clearly apprehension about just how much the blacks will want. I think there have been a lot of false promises, and there a lot of them are expecting things that aren't going to happen. I know a lot of the domestic workers are thinking that after the elections, they can walk down the street and say, that's going to be my house, and that's the way it's going to work. They think that after the 27th, that's it. They all have houses, jobs, everything like that. But at Soweto's Fafeni Secondary School, they do want change to be quick and radical. Trophus and his friends study in crowded classrooms in a system that would have spent three times more on them if they'd been white. Our education here in Soweto is very poor. Yes, it must be like uh, the white and equal. I'm expecting that to happen. Out of school, Trophus joins an improvised kickabout on what passes for the local football pitch. It's not much, but away from the crime and the killings, it's often the best that township life has to offer. Kristen, in contrast, has become an accomplished ice skater, being coached four or five times a week in the holidays. Drop the right knee, drop the right knee. Clearly, there will be rich and poor in any society. What's marked out South Africa has been that until now, being rich has been a white privilege. For the black generations, I think it's great because they're going to be able to develop themselves to the full, which they've never had the opportunity to do before. Blacks are very poor. They must improve themselves in order to live peacefully. Two young people who spent their childhood in a divided land. But was it just apartheid that kept them apart? Can their generation now live together in the new South Africa? The future of the country could depend on it. James Mates, News at 10, South Africa.